This video is aimed to provide some tips on how you can make piers within Planet Coaster like this one and have both amusements and stores upon them as well. So what we're going to do, we're just going to jump into this demo sandbox and once you've got a body of water like this one, you come across to the path tool and choose a nice horizontal wooden pattern and we're going to start on the solid area. So we're going to click, hold Y, select grid, and then we're going to use the grid tool and we're going to build out across the water. So what will happen is you'll get a pier like this one. I have turned off the curbs and railings, which is why you get this sort of flat pier design here. Now, as you can see over here, the actual elevation of the terrain is a little tough to join the path and it's only joined in a tiny bit. So what we can do is we can just do a bit of flattened foundation here. We're just trying to like flatten out just the area we're joining. Grab the path again. Put your grid back on. And we should, for the most part, be able to join this up. This whole technique is not perfect. You will get little bits like that, but if you keep ed editing, putting back in, removing, you'll be able to get it to join. So as you can see, we've got the default supports in here. And although they're doing a great job of holding it up, they look a little bit messy and we want to create something a bit more uniform. So what you can do is if you come below the water. Now, first thing we want to do actually is just try and flatten out this terrain. It'll make it a lot easier for the next step. And this next step that I show you will work for both piers, um, roller coasters, basically anything with a support. What you can do is once it's flattened, a nice flat area just makes it a lot easier. You want to place the natural path. You want to click and then essentially you're going to create the grid again and you're going to build this grid out as if you were building a plaza or the pier itself directly underneath the other one. Now we use the natural path because it only adds sort of those little wooden tiny little bits around the outside. It doesn't completely, uh, it's not completely visible through, our, um, through the water. You can just come through nicely like that and build all those out. Now the ones near the mountain, you can do two things. You can either come into the terrain tool and push them down a little bit just so that you can get them down to a flat and this will change the shape of your sort of uh your water area and once they're down like that you can then bring them up to the foundations nice and easily like that and you can place a path on those so we can just go in we can extend using either the curved paths or like we were doing before we could build it out with our grid again and you just want to go over all the supports to get rid of them if however you want to keep the shape of your banking and stuff like that and you maybe want to customize it up top you could do the other way so you could use pull and then you could use pull to sort of shape the ground around these default supports so as you can see now what i've got is a pier and I've managed to, by using both them techniques sort of combined, shape the terrain underneath the first side of the pier to hide those default supports. And I've got a bit of a mess of a custom path underneath the water, but no one's going to see that. So it's all okay. Now what we're going to do to put in some manual supports is we're going to jump across to the create tool. We're going to go down to the columns and we're going to use the modern wood column for meter and what we're going to do is we're going to find a nice spot for this to sit and we're going to get the markers so yeah that's that's probably a good distance from both sides and the reason we're setting the markers is we're going to put them and we're going to build out a sort of custom building on top of our pier which we're then going to duplicate and drop below. So what I tend to do is keep it on four and go all the way to the end. And then your middle one, 
you can sort of make a decision. You could drop your grid to two meter and then potentially just place the middle one slightly apart so that it looks quite neat. Now we've got a two gap and then a one. So I'm just going to repeat this pattern. You want to keep that grid going nice and easily like this. And then once you've done that, you'll end up with a custom building of columns that look similar to this. And then what I do is I go and advance, move and duplicate. I'm going to swap to the Y axis and then I'm just going to swap to the other camera. And I can come below here and the first one you want to make sure is sort of just within your path. Come out a little bit. And then we've got sort of it lined up underneath. So we're going to grab the top one again. Come all the way through. And then what you want to do is keep repeating this. So you're aligning the bottom one so it sort of collides. And it just gives that sort of effect that the column has actually continued. And you want to run through and do that all the way to the bottom. And then you'll end up something like this. So you've got your custom supports in. And as you can see under the ground, they go right to the bottom of our lake. So what we're going to do now is put some custom railings in. And the way I do that is I go into create, come to find a fence type that I like. I'm going to use the framework. And then what I'm going to do then is jump into the advanced tools, make sure I've got an angle snap on because we want to make sure that it keeps the shape. I'm going to turn to be the right way and then vertically as well. And then what we're going to do is come into advanced move. And what we're going to do now is swap there. I'm going to line this up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try and get halfway through this border that does retain and then you can choose whether you want a small or a high and then you could run this all the way down one side so it'll automatically switch to auto duplicate then you can run this all the way down and have custom supports on the side of your pier don't be afraid to overlap it don't be afraid to do it short everything will sort of give you that slightly different feel rather than looking completely uniform and copied and then when you get to the end you do the exact same so maybe we just bring this one back slightly so it overlaps nicely and then we'll bring it pretty much to the edge because on the edge all you're going to do is swap to the advanced rotate come around and then essentially go back and then you're going to line up with the two parts there roughly there come across and then you're going to start the same find where you you like the feel of it maybe there-ish and then continue that pattern there and that is how you can do the custom side to the pier so what we're going to look at doing next is putting a shop or a small building into our pier so we'll come in select one from facilities and uh, let's go for this one and we'll try and place it now what you'll notice is that by default it won't let you place it if we come above we rotate it it won't let you place it on top it'll throw up the sort of error saying look i can't do this there's something obstructing where i want to go so what we're going to do is we'll decide roughly where we want to put it so maybe around here and then you're actually going to come out of this, go back into the path menu, and we're just going to remove the tiles where the shop would be. And then when we come in, we'll go back to our advanced rotate and advance move. We can then line it up. And what we're going to do is not, don't care too much about how your peer looks right now. What you try to do is line up the shop as close as you can so that it auto joins your path. So as you can see, it's sort of already looking blended. So we're going to bring that as far forward as it'll let us. And then we're going to do that to the side as well. You're trying to hide the fact that you've got big holes in your pier. 
and we'll hide them slightly more in a sec but this is the sort of the first technique to do it so what we want to do now is make it look a bit less like we've just dropped this building on the side so we're going to just come into the advanced move and first of all we're going to just try and get that as close to where it'll let us put it we're going to make sure this shop is still accessible so we're trying to blend that as much as we can and then what i do for this side bit you're sort of masking the fact that it's an issue now the first thing i do is get the panels and what i do with the panels is drop them slightly so they blow the main deck so there's not actually a hole because we don't want we don't actually want a hole in our pier um and you can do that on both sides this is completely optional i just like to do it to hide the fact there's a hole and then what I also like to do is, if you come into the planters, I like to use these big basket planters to maybe build out some sort of area next to it. So we could have a big basket, we could have a small basket, and you're essentially using the scenery to hide the fact that you have put a big hole. So what we're going to do next is we're going to put a ride on here. So we're going to select the big wheel, and we're going to come to advanced move. Try and line it up as best we can, bringing it as close to the pier as we can. And then we're going to place our entrance and we're going to place our exit. And what we're going to do is we're going to brag this, grab this building again. And we're just going to bring it enough that it starts generating the exit path. And then what you want to do is you want to use the exit path as your guide. And line that up as close as you can so that the path when it joins looks flat it's not too far off and it's a nice distance away so then you want to place that now you've got your exit now what we need to do for the front of the queue is we're going to go into path again remove the closest blocks swap to our queue our wooden style one and we're going to create a path. And what we're going to do is we are going to join this at an angle. And then what you've got there is your ride is now connected to your pier. Of course, we've done it again. There's lots of holes hidden in the pier. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in. Not that menu, this menu. We're going to jump back to my board. And as you saw earlier, we're going to fill in the pier with the boards. So you want to go to advanced move. Just keep selecting these. You want to fill in all of that big gap you just made. So what you'll end up with once you've dressed it is something that looks a bit more like this. So it's less obvious that you've actually broken into the section of the pier. Looks a tad tidier. And of course, you've still got your queue. You could, of course, make that a lot cleaner. You can add in other stuff. So you can potentially like add in benches and stuff at this point, And it will then give your customers an area to sort of sit. Whilst, I don't know, they're waiting for someone else to go on the ride. You can get some bins in there. So you can, you can dress these areas quite a lot. And I'd spend... If you're looking to do a style like this, spend quite a bit of time just experimenting with different uh, scenery pieces and getting sort of a style that really fits what you're trying to achieve. Now in the example earlier, what I'd done is I'd actually put a custom wall between these so it doesn't look like the ride's completely joined. And for this, I actually use the wooden column again. But what I do is I sync this and I make it look as if it's a part of the part of the ride. Now it will be a little fiddly. It'll also put you into building mode. But what you want to do is you want to get two together like so. Bring these as close as possible because you're trying to make it look seamless. And then once you've got two as a marker, what you can do is go into it, advance, move and duplicate, and just keep working your way across. Now, if you did want to speed this up, you could save them as a blueprint, but instead of filling yourself with loads of custom blueprints, 
you just do a few and you work your way across and as you can see you're building a custom wall that goes over the gap there and then one of the other things you can do is if you just come into the sort of planters again there's like a nice planter here this log planter and you can sit that in front of it and then what i tend to do with this one is i'll just submerge that slightly so it sort of comes to just the round part of the log line that up with the outside and then you can work that sort of design across there to create this middle section that joins essentially your ride to your pier so the next sort of technique that's quite important to this is hiding the metal bases that rides actually have the way i do this is i use create and i go across to that same wooden panel that i have repeatedly used in this build this one here and then what I do with this one is, first of all, I go on to stick to surface. So I can bring it right up against my pier. And then I'll turn that bit off. And from here, then I will use advanced move and advanced rotate. So I want to make sure I've got that snapped. I'm going to go to the Y and I'm going to line that up with my pier. And then I'm going to use the advanced move tools to align that how I want it. So I actually did just move that slightly, but I can move it back. Bring that down. And then you want to start building the shape of the outside of your pier. So you come across, you can go both ways. And of course, to fill this gap, you can, you can do the same as earlier. You can create sort of a custom divide custom wall or what you can do is if you play around with your ride position a bit more you can get it right up against the edge of your pier itself so what i tend to do is just run through and we build up this sort of custom bottom to your pier so that it doesn't look like um, sorry, sorry, so it looks more like this is the design of the, the pier itself. And as you can see, blends in with the, the supports and you get the sort of wooden finish feel. To get rid of the supports on the ride, you do exactly the same as earlier. Come below the ride, you swap to your natural path. You can even continue the grid you already had. And as you build below them, that'll remove them. And then all you do is the same technique as you did earlier to put in the custom supports there. So as you can see, coming back into our demo pier, we've used these techniques throughout this build. So as you can see, the custom pier is here. The custom supports are all built out here. The custom... Um, railings are all here and we added the extra wood to make it look like the pier was a lot thicker we then added some extra scenery pieces and that's the bit that i'd sort of suggest here is spend time doing this this is one one of the more fiddly techniques that you can do within this game but the more time you spend working on it and dressing it with the scenery pieces the nicer it's going to turn out as you can see, I've got all the custom walls and I did create a bit more of a squared path, but you can see that slight curve that I put in here. I used the scenery to hide where I had bits of a gap. And if we look on the other side, because I finished the pattern around, that was all joined across nicely there as well. And then all I did after that was I added in some lights some tables, chairs, umbrellas, and that is what we did to create this sort of custom pier design within Planet Coaster. I hope this has helped you out today, and I will catch you in the next one.